Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to your Thursday. If it's eight o'clock, if it's Thursday, you know what this is. This is Veganish with Dr. Monique. I am a board certified family physician known as the physician in the kitchen. I help busy households enjoy healthy eating without impacting their hectic schedule. And on Veganish, we talk about all things plant based. I share with you my triumphs, my challenges, and bring you along for the ride. As we've said, this is the fastest 30 minutes of my day. So we'll just go ahead and tag in Mr. Ellis as we can get this show started. How are you doing today? I am doing great. I'm excited to be here. We see, you know, we've got the color coordination. That's just a little precursor to what we're going to be talking about tonight. <laughs> got to coordinate. We, right. we coordinate. We have to coordinate. coordinate. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, you know, last week, so we're continuing our series on um, eating the rainbow, right? So last week, if you joined us, we were talking about red foods. So we're going to continue. And maybe what I'm wearing gives you a little hint as far as where we're going. But before we get into that, you know what we do around here? We say this is Rep Your City. Rep your city, your state, your zip code, your country. Let us know where you are watching us from. And be sure to tag a friend, a loved one, telling them to come on in here and fellowship with us. If you are watching this on the replay, we thank you. And please drop hashtag replay. So, so far, I see Bren Inside Out is joining. Hello and welcome. Where are you from? Let us know. Because we like to, we like to know how far, you know. We trying to be, uh, you know, what's the what's the rapper, Mister Worldwide? We we try to we try to take over, right? Atlanta, GA. I love it. I love it. I'll be in Atlanta uh, at the end of the month for uh, overnight. So yes, I love it. Are you coming uh, for MMA? Yeah. I'm not coming for N NMA. Um, no, I my schedule this year did not work out, so I need to plan that for for the next one. Uh, but no, I, I it's so much going on, and I, I need to talk to you, Ellis, about Fam U and Chapel Hill. Did you know there's a you know the football game is coming, yeah, right? There is. Are you I'm trying to get there. Um, okay. My golf crew is 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 already is already kind of planning something uh, to, to ride up there and, and watch okay. the game. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll talk off camera, but I said, oh, I need to, I need to, I, I think I need to go to that game. So let's see, folks are starting to come in. We've got Mr. Raymond uh, chiming in from Northeast Ohio. Welcome to Midwest. I, you know, the Midwest and like, it's always like the Midwest and then New York, like they all kind of, it's so funny how like regionally folks tend to start to trickle on in. So, we're going to go ahead and get our show started, but, you know, we like to, we thrive off of, off of our audience participation. Like, we like to know that you guys are out there, you're engaged, and so please start thinking about your questions, um, drop them in the chat, we'll get to as many as we can during the show. So last week, we started our series, Eat the Rainbow, hashtag Eat the Rainbow. If you follow me on social media at Physician in the Kitchen, I'm always talking about Eat the Rainbow, right? There's, we know there's a candy company that's got kind of a slogan, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the healthy rainbow because, you know, when you go into the grocery store in the produce aisle, I mean, that's what it is, right? You see all these beautiful different colors, and those colors are healthy plant chemicals that have all these wonderful benefits. So Raymond said eggplant purple. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so so last week we kicked it off with red. And we talked about things like apples and red bell peppers and cherries. And there Sherry is like clockwork. Thank you, Sherry, for tuning in from Brooklyn, New York. So last week we talked about a lot of red foods and tomatoes, and so uh, including tomatoes. And one of the plant chemicals we talked about was lycopene, which is one of the chemicals that gives food their red color and gives has a lot of the, the health benefits. Well, tonight we are talking about purple, the color purple, right? Oh. It's, not, it's not only just a, a, a bestseller by Alice Walker in a movie with Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> It is coming on the show tonight. <laughs> it's, it's not none of that. We, we're talking about the color purple you will find in your produce aisle. And so, what we want you to start doing is go ahead and start. Uh, Raymond's already kind of kicked off by mentioning eggplant, but go ahead and start. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for tagging folks. Um, go ahead and start dropping in what are some of your favorite purple foods. Now, this one is right up my alley because I have to tell you, purple is my actual favorite color. And so it has been since I was five years old. Yes. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you're talking about purple food. So when you think about purple food, Ellis, like kind of like what's, what's some of the things that, some of the foods that, that come to mind? Well, number one, my man, he's already kind of 
kicked it off with the one food that I really think about first and foremost is uh, eggplant, right? Because it is, it is really, really big and and, and just it's purple. It's, it is purple, purple. Like yeah, purple, yeah. purple. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I see like Sherry talk about grapes. The grapes have that like that little red tint. Eggplant is, I'm, I'm talking horny grimace purple kind of situation. <laughs> well, it depends. Some grapes can be really purple. Um, you know, really depend on the type or the or the the um the you know the type of grape that you're getting. But we're gonna definitely we're gonna get into that. But yes, I see purple cabbage. Oh yes, eggplant grapes. So yes, so we've got um we've got a slide. Right, because you know we, we're visual around here. We like to show, and we're going to talk about some of these. And look at that! Just is oh. that not gorgeous? Wow! Look at that! Let me let me move so, that out of the way. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there with the logos, but um, okay. that is beautiful. So we're gonna, I'm gonna see. Let's let's see if you all plums. I oh, I love plums, especially this time of year. Um. If you all can name, start naming some of the ones you see mm. in the because we've got some, we've got some unusual ones in there. So yeah. let's see what you all can name um, from from what you see in the picture. And we're going to go ahead and get started talking about some of these. Now, last week we talked about lycopene is one of the plant pigments. This week, the plant plant pigment du jour that gives purple foods their color and also their uh, their benefits is something called um, anthocyanins. Fancy word, but basically that's what purple foods have. And and I want to be sure to to make you aware that we're, when we're talking about the foods, particularly the skins, some of these, with especially like the berries, um, you want to include the the skin because that's where a lot of the benefit is. Okay, that like that, that's even true for for apples as well. So for sweet potatoes, yes, there is a a mango scene. Yes, Bren, who said that? Bren. <laughs> That she is a ringer because Peace up, a top down, baby girl. I, I, I am impressed. <laughs> mango seed. So, yes, and I had to, I was like, what is a mango seed, right? And I've I've never unfortunately I've never actually had it. I, I'd be intrigued because I was like, what is that purple thing with the eggs? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, the mango seed is the one in the bottom right corner, and it looks like it's holding some 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 eggs but we're gonna get to to that but this slide so we're gonna kind of work our way around so you see purple cauliflower mm -hmm. acai berries purple rice purple sweet potatoes and what's important here is the the potato is actually purple inside because there are purple potatoes but we're talking but and you you peel them and the inside is actually white or yellow this we're talking about is purple through and through. They make those beautiful purple uh, potato chips, right? They're, they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So um, the stems, they're the stalk looking things. There's actually purple asparagus. Uh, on the next row, we've got elderberry, blackberry, um, passion fruit. And then we've got some purple kale. I would love to find some purple kale. I, I have not seen that in person, but I can only imagine. Um, we've got the cabbage there, some eggplant, purple carrots, radicchio, which, you know, reddish, purplish, and then the mango steam. So let's kind of, so just looking at that, that, that the picture there, Ella, it's kind of like, what, what jumps out at you as far as, are there any surprises on the, on this screen for you on the slide? Or is it kind of like, yeah, I did well, that. Well, well, Brian snatched, she snatched all of my uh, surprise out. Like, just like with, with what she, with the mango stand, she dropped that one. Um, she dropped the mic. She dropped the mic, <laughs> she dropped the mic on the she mango stand. Yes. But I, I would say some of these, you know, some of these things you're not going to be able to find in your regular grocery store. You might have to search a little bit because your, your regular grocery store is probably going to have just your, your general stuff that sells better because, as we all know, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables don't keep very long. And so a grocery store has to make a decision. To, to, I'm getting too into the weeds right now, but a grocery store has to make a decision when they're purchasing fruits and vegetables that they, that they are pretty sure it's going to get bought. Otherwise, they have to throw it out. And so they're going to buy kind of your typical items. But there are stores that have this. And so I will encourage each of you, go get some purple potatoes, go get some purple carrots, go get that purple cabbage, uh, the, the purple cauliflower. It will 
change the <laughs> appeal <laughs> of your plate. <laughs> and it's, you know, we eat with our eyes first. And so when you have yes. those beautiful colors, it's so inviting. But yeah, Sherry said Asian markets, definitely uh, Asian markets are an option. Also farmer's markets. If you yes. have the opportunity to, to have farmer's markets this time of year, particularly, uh, you know, see what's, what's out in your area because you, you may be surprised. Uh, Raymond asked about pomegranate. Yes, pomegranate. We couldn't put everything on the slide because you, you see we don't have plums on here. Um, we actually and we actually don't have uh, grapes on here uh, either. Well, we have some berries, but not grapes. So, you know, this slide is not all inclusive, but um, Brent says she used the magazine her smoothies when available and she shops at the International Farmer's Market. Oh, in Metro Atlanta that offers. That is- Really, you want to the one off of- um over in the cab, you you're talking about the cab farmers market? Is that the one you're going to, Brand? Because I, I need to. If that's the one, I know where it's at. So you, I, you, yeah, you need to you need to get with that, Ellis. And next time I'm in Atlanta, I'm gonna see if I can if I can swing through because I would love because they say it tastes like banana, like a banana peachy taste. Is that um, is that true, Brand? As far as what mangosteen actually tastes like, what would you what flavor profile would you say? Uh, but reading it, it says reading about it, they said like. Banana, peachy. I would uh, say if she can put it in a smoothie, I would say that's probably pretty close. Probably, probably, that's yeah, probably. So all right, so let's get into some. Yep, the cop. There you go, y'all. So y'all, ATLNs. <laughs> like really, I, I. That's not fair. I'm gonna have to find the Charlotte equivalent of that. We have farmers Ooh. market, but and I'm that gonna. That's a cat one. You can find anything you want up in there. I oh. promise you. <laughs> See, we gonna, they they gonna have to come through with some sponsorships because uh, we we are blowing them up. So we're gonna go ahead and go through this uh, uh, list, and then I want to spend a few minutes talking about acai and elderberry because those are the two that kind of have gotten some major press here lately or over the past few years. So let's go uh, through the list. So yes, we mentioned um, uh, plums, which are you know we're in season right now, right? And so the, mm -hmm. the darker, I'm a firm believer, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. I right. think the darker, <laughs> I, mean, I, love my, I like blue black plums. I mean, they can't they can't make them dark enough for me. So hi there, NYC in the house. Thank you so much. They can't they, they can't come dark enough for me. And so I, I grapes, plums. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not a, a big berry eater, which I should be, but those those are uh, those are some of my favorites. But speaking of berries, um, and this this category includes like you know your blackberries, your blueberries, your raspberries, which of course are kind of reddish, but they can be kind of purplish too. Um, all of these have brain power benefits, right? So if you want to shock your brain or, or or boost your brain, maybe a better way to say it. Um, we talked about some of those smoothies. Throw a handful of those of blackberries in there because those are are full of, of antioxidants that are we have um, studies have shown that boost brain health. Um, so also the purple potatoes. So I wanted to to spend a few minutes talking about this because purple potatoes have two to three times the amount of uh, nutrients like potassium, fiber, and anthocyanins as uh, a regular potato. So that I thought was really, um, was really important, was really helpful information because not only, you know, we, we said that the, when you can get the color version of something that's better for you, well, we see potatoes definitely live up to that. Um, <laughs> Tina says she loves elderberry, has been using it for years. Okay. She her dentist says elderberry bushes and allows me to from them. You know, we're going to talk about elderberries because there are some concerns with elderberries. So I'm so glad you, you brought that up. Um, moving on down the list, of course, we have grapes. Um, the they, the chemical or the health chemical in grapes is actually something called resveratrol. Um, and it's thought to help that is as is an antioxidant as well that helps protect the cells of the body. Purple cauliflower. The reason that cauliflower, purple cauliflower is is happens or occurs is as a gene. There's a gene that makes it turn from white to purple, which I just thought was so so cool. Uh, you know, in humans, we have genes that make our eye color a certain way or whatever. So plants have that too. Um, so and then eating it raw actually preserves the the content. So when you can eat it either raw or stir fried or microwave, those are ways of cooking it that actually preserves um, most of the nutrients. So mm. good to know. Um, purple carrots. Now I I've had these, and I personally think they're sweeter than regular carrots, in my opinion. Um, but again, all the nutrition 
that you get with carrots, but just to give you that color, that pop, that yeah. really makes you like, you know, get into that. Uh, red cabbage has been thought to be helpful to help your biome, microbiome in, in your gut. And also I was reading something, if you if you're into if you subscribe to alkaline versus not, um, you can actually test your urine with red cabbage, and I forget how it, it works. I should have looked it up, but basically, you add uh, juice, like you you basically uh, simmer or, or uh, cabbage and water, and then I think you add that water to the toilet, and then based on how what color the water turns, it can tell you if you're too alkaline or just the right amount. So I thought that was actually pretty interesting. So if, if anybody here has done that or That's used a home that, remedy right there. It's a home <laughs> remedy. And I was like, okay, wait, so we're doing some chemistry in the toilet. Okay. Uh, but that's a, that's a interesting. So if anyone here has, has done that, let, let me know what your experience was. And then, of course, um, beets. You know, beets are that deep reddish, purplish, um, can stain your fingers. So when you're working with them, I do recommend gloves if, unless you don't, you don't mind having that purple tinge for a few days. Um, I but, can't mess with beats. I can't do it. I got, see, a mental, I got a mental block on beats. No, but this, then you're the perfect, you're the perfect person. I'm telling you, <laughs> that's the way, that's when you start thinking about different ways either. Because a lot of, I think it's like Brussels sprouts and beets. I think the way that people ate them as children, like either boiled with not much flavor, you know, kind of imprinted on our brains that they're gross. <laughs> but as you get older, there are so many different ways. Roasted beets, are you kidding me? They're so sweet. And I, I have a recipe where I spiralize them and make them into a spaghetti and blanch them in hot water for like five minutes. They become, and it cuts down on the cooking time because they're now the surface area is smaller. So they don't need right. as long because beets are root vegetables. So they need at least, you know, 45 minutes or so to cook based on how they're, how big they are. Um, by spiralizing them and making them into these fine curly strips, you blanch them, cook them, toss them with your uh, favorite sauce and you're good to go. What are you laughing at? I just, I, like, you said the two the two vegetables that are on my I cannot eat list, and that is beets and Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts. Brussels sprouts, I don't even want to talk about because I don't want to disrupt because a lot of people love Brussels sprouts. I, so I'm not but it's the way they're made. I'm telling you, I if you have you some roasted Brussels sprouts <laughs> with like a little bit of balsamic, oh my goodness. Um uh, Raymond said fresh roasted beets will change your life. Tell him, get them together, Raymond, please. Because <laughs> I I I 100% wholeheartedly agree with that statement. Um, I really have developed an appreciation for them in, in culinary school, having had to make them in a couple of different recipes. And, then and I hear in. they're so good for your heart. I hear they're fantastic oh, beets for your heart. Are, beets are amazing. Um, and then they can also be used in smoothies. Don't forget, you because beets are sweet. Beets are actually mm -hmm. sweet, so they can be used in um, in smoothies and not to mention the fiber that you're going to get is that root vegetable yeah. so in our last few minutes here i want to talk about elderberry and acai so let's start with acai so just to remind you acai is the one on the screen here acai is the one uh i wish i had a pointer but it's the one kind of just up to the right of the cabbage so that's a uh, okay uh, i'm sorry that's the elderberry acai is the, the one the sun i'm sorry acai is the one next to the um, cauliflower. cauliflower, thank you. And okay. the the side, it, I mean, an elderberry is next to the cabbage. So back, you know, we have Oprah Winfrey to thank for acai being kind of um, popularized because apparently it was on the Oprah Winfrey show when it was named, uh, it was named a superfood. And so it kind of took off from there apparently, but it contained, and the reason it's called an S superfood is because it actually contains more antioxidants than blueberries, strawberries, cranberries. And as we know, antioxidants are those healthy chemicals that help prevent chronic disease such as, or destructive diseases such as cancer or inflammation or heart disease. So that's where they, that um, kind of took off. You can find them in, in almost any form. They can be eaten raw, juiced, or in a pill. Um, some people, of course, put them in smoothies. Um, but you, they say that they taste like blackberries. I haven't, I have not really eaten them several. I think I've had them in smoothies, but I haven't just eaten. Have you had some of them, Alice? Have you had? Uh, uh, probably uh, unintentionally, probably. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put Alice and tie in the corner. Agnes says beets, cucumbers with sea moss, and I'm not sure what that emoji is. Is that a peach? I'm not sure what that is. It could be a lemon. Uh, 
Oh, those lemons. Okay, sorry. Yeah. You can see on my, my screen. Um, Tina said, earthy, dirty taste is uh, for, for beets. Yes, right. Because exactly, they're, they're, they're a root vegetable. Yeah, she was saying she soaks yeah. them. Mm -hmm. She says she smokes them uh, for like 24 to 48 hours to remove that earth. To get that taste. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you certainly can, but I find roasting them really brings out the and, natural And spirit. Tina, that's why I don't eat them. That earthy, Sweet. dirty taste. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not going back to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, so, uh, but the, the because they're, because the acai berries are so high in the antioxidants, that's why they're considered a superfood. And not only that, they actually have a good amount of fat, which I thought was very interesting, because when you think of Fruits, you don't really think of uh, fat, at least I don't, unless maybe avocado. That would be about the only fruit that I would think of as being a, a, a high fat fruit. Um, but they contain high levels of omega-3, omega-6, and okay. monosaturated oleic acid. And all of these Those are, are good fats. These are the good fats. So these yeah. are the ones to help prevent blocked arteries, help your brain, and so forth. Um, Raymond. Now, see, we're going to have to beet juice is essential for real red velvet cake. I am working on a recipe for that. <laughs> I am. I was like, I want to use, I don't want to use red food coloring. I want to use beet juice. Um, and so I'm working on a recipe with, with that. So Jetta says she wants to learn how to eat healthier. Well, you're in the right place. I mean, you are you you are in the like literally the right place, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about something else you can do to find. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm I'm just in the cat bird seat because I'm I'm still working on it. I'm still working on me right now. I, I've been, I've been that's okay. That's and that's, you know one of the uh, Peloton instructors. She says um, you can be you are a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. And I, I love that. I think that I think that is so true. So yes. Yeah, so acai berries have. Uh, the good fats, they have the the uh, antioxidants. And again, you want to be sure to include the skin because a lot of those nutrients are in the skin of those berries. You can eat acai like 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 some grapes. Like you can just get a bunch of acai. You, you can eat those raw. You can eat those raw. What you want to talk about is different from elderberry. So we're gonna that's I want to contrast those two. Um, but as far as weight loss, because some people may be wondering, well, what have I heard about weight loss in acai? There's not been any real research just to really support acai as a as a weight loss agent. There's been some uh, supplements when, when used as a supplement. That's the claim. But as of now, I don't think there's really any uh, real scientific studies that support that. So just keep that in mind. Um, and also, there's not been any research done on the safety of the supplements. So just want to remind you, because we've said yeah. this on the show before, just because something says it's natural or healthy doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have harm associated with it, particularly if you're on prescription medications, right? Because yep. there can be interactions. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, confer, you know, consult with your physician about that. Bottom line, um, your best supplement is the real thing. Just get the real fruit and vegetables. Just, don't, get, don't get, the a just get the real thing and, the real and, thing. Eat it and, and you'll be all right. And for the most part, now, you know, it, there are certain foods if you're on certain medications that we tell you to be careful with. So, again, right. we are speaking in generalities and right. you want to take this to your physician based on what's your your health conditions, what medications you're on. But, yes, I agree with you. The, the natural form is usually the best form for it's you. It's usually the best. But whatever, now, your, whatever your grandmama ate, whatever your grandma ate. Outside of the lard and the fat back. <laughs> well, that's not natural. Well, I guess technically, it is, but anyway. But now we just said the, the natural form is the best for you, but now we're going to contradict that because the exception yeah. to that is elderberry. And yeah. I thought this was so interesting, right? Because who thinks that, I mean, of course there's poisonous foods, but something that's sold as a supplement to help you, like I wouldn't think that the natural form would be poisonous, but it actually can be. So elderberry is a, a plant that is found, it's um it's European, it's, it's found in Europe, but it's grown throughout the world. Um and they're they're tart. The berries are tart, but they actually have to be cooked to be to be eaten. If you mm -hmm. eat them raw, you will regret it. Okay. So and, and throughout the history of time, they've been used for pain relief, like the leaves have been used for pain relief and swelling, um, different uh, things like influenza infections. And during COVID, kind of during the height of COVID, I remember reading uh, con about concerns with interactions between some of the elderberry supplements and Motrin, like if you were in and COVID, like there was a concern with there being, yeah, like an interaction. So interesting um, to, to realize that. But there are definitely health benefits. I mean, as it when it's used properly, um, 
it, some people, again, it's where it is a relief for cold and flu symptoms. Mm -hmm. It does have a ton of antioxidants, just like anything else we've been discussing, um, vitamin, which, which includes your vitamin C and those anthocyanins, those healthy purple chemicals. However, what you want to be careful with is when you eat it uh, raw. So the, the stems, the bark, the seeds, the unripe berries, all of that, no good. You, do, you should not want to eat it because it actually contains something called lectin, which is uh, can cause, if you have eat too much, it can cause upset stomach, diarrhea. And then they actually, uh, in small amounts, can contain cyanide. So the plant itself can contain substances that can be kind of converted into cyanide. So it's the same kind of thing with apricot pits as well and almonds. So there's that kind of correlation. But um, cooked preparations, you know, commercial and cooked preparations don't have that. So we're talking strictly about um, branches, barks, leaves should not be used in cooking or juicing and unripe unripe berries. And also pregnant women, lactating women, and children uh, or adolescents under 18 is not recommended to eat elderberries. So have they have the health benefits, but the supplements, um, you know, you want to, again, be mindful of any potential interactions with that, uh, with, with your medications. And, but then the, the um, if you're going to eat them, you need, they need to be ripe. They need to be cooked and, and go from there. The only time I've ever had elderberries, I hate to say this, is in a, in an adult beverage, um, and, uh, syrup, I mean, syrup, because the syrup yeah, used, it's, it's used a lot in like those you know those those swanky uh, upscale, and they're always in it. That's it's always been something some beverage on there with elderberry. In it. Did it come like with a glass cover over it, and they took it off and it had smoke coming out of it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I'm picturing. You know, it you always comes to that little, the old school champagne glass, you know, the shorts with the stem and the. Yes. And the kind of, yeah, it's always had something like a little, some dried fruit floating on the top. It was real sexy, but I'm just I saying that's all the time. Thank you, know. Jetta. Is Jetta is my? It, that's my clan. Jetta is my clan. Okay. Oh, girl, so, that, that name earlier from Atlanta, she's your clan. Uh, oh, oh, with the ones that from the farmer's market? The, yes, yes. Okay, she's okay. But Jetta is my clan. She knows what okay. it is. Okay. real, yes. <laughs> Yeah, Bren, I, and Bren had me when she said Mangostain, so, you know, I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. But yeah, so we, we're going to, you know, our time is, is coming up, but, you know, we've talked about some ways that you can incorporate these. So, and the purple rice, let me, I just wanted to say a quick thing about purple rice, because I do actually cook with that. And it's kind of in the same family as brown rice, so that means it needs to take, it's it's more, it's not processed. Um, it's, it's the, it has the, the brand, the whole fiber. And so that means it needs to cook longer uh, to get it to the right consistency. But I, I make a, a cilantro, uh, lime, uh, kind of dressing and drizzle, and it's just it's delicious. So um, the fiber in the rice is, is it's yes, it's very good. You can actually buy it in the grocery store. I've I've found it in Publix. Um, so yeah, it's actually very good. And if you you know if you don't want to wait on the stove top, you can put it in a pressure cooker or a rice cooker, and, and help speed up the process. So lots of different foods here that you can start to incorporate. Um, different ways, you know, and, and you know, you don't even have to do anything special, right? Cauliflower. Um, if you cook cauliflower, you cook bro bro uh, the purple the same way. Cabbage, you, you know, dice it up, put it in a slaw, put it in a, in a stir fry. You don't have to do anything special to them for the most part. You're just, uh, they're just a different version, a different um, color or variety for you. And eggplant, eggplant, don't be afraid of eggplant. Some, there's a lot of recipes on the internet about eggplant. Some of them say you have to salt them and let them sit to draw that water out. Some of them say, don't worry about that just cook them you know just just go with it so you have to find what works for you i i don't like all the extra time associated with eggplant when they say that so i i use mine as a, a cube large dice um actually i just made a thai dinner a, a thai dish yesterday that had eggplant zucchini and um oh gosh uh, what was the other thing it was delicious and we made it we put it in a thai a thai, uh, thai chili a green green chili and made a curry so it was spicy but then we balanced it with the coconut milk it was delicious uh, and the eggplant had a really nice meaty consistency in that so think about that as an egg substitute or excuse me egg as a meat substitute it's egg shaped uh think about um 
your uh, eggplant as a as a meat substitute or like for a meatless Monday and see how you do. Throw it on the grill. This time of year, it'd be great on the grill. So I hope that helped. I mean, Italian that was dish, a big a famous Italian dish is also eggplant parmesan. Yeah, parmesan, exactly, exactly. There's some eggplant parmesan, but I would I would just say, it, it, all jokes aside, in terms of the the purple, it does it makes your plate look so much more appealing, and it's not you know it's purple carrot, so you would prepare it the same way you would prepare the orange carrot. Yeah, it's right? gross. It's that look on your plate, you can mix in some orange, some white carrots, and whatever, and you can mix that up, and then now you've got a really a more appealing plate. Uh, if you like that kind of thing, I, I'm, I consider myself a, like I say, a, a, a ghetto foodie. So I do like to flip, flip it up every once in a while, and, and <laughs> make it, make it happen. So yes. But, uh, I see big money slinging under the gun. He said, "I really like purple rice." You know, big money was the star from last week, right? Yes. So good to see you back, big money. But purple rice, yes, it's, it's delicious. It's got a nice texture, tooth, uh, mouth texture when you eat it. It's, it's really delicious. So. We're actually going to start to wrap up, but there was, I think Jetta said she wanted to learn how to eat healthier within. Well, you need Doc Fix My Plate, a physician in the kitchen's prescriptions for your healthy meal makeover. It's on sale now at docfixmyplatebook.com. It's my vegan cookbook. It has over 50 vegan recipes in it, and it also has information on how to set up a vegan kitchen, tips and tricks to help you try to t transition toward a more plant-based diet. And also just follow me on all social media at Physician in the Kitchen. And uh, especially on Instagram, I'm over there. I've got videos of me making my homework and all kinds of fun stuff. So we're going to head on out of here. But uh, actually, I think we'll be back. What date, um, Ellis? We're going to take a little hiatus for a few weeks. Yeah, yeah, because you, I think you're you're off uh, next week. Yeah, and then then we've got two special uh, Facebook lives on the 28th, so we're gonna not be here on the 28th. So we'll be back in three weeks. Uh, we'll be back here at our regular time Thursday. Uh, I can give you the exact date. If you give me two seconds. I, I think it's the 11th, right? Because I think they had they. Uh, I think you got two lined up, or I think one of them might be impossible. One like of them is impossible. So I'm, I'm going to. I got two in a possible, like a space hand, exactly. <laughs> but, but definitely, uh, the, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm like 85% sure we'll be back on the 4th of August so Okay, we'll All in, right. in three weeks, um, coming back. So yeah. So Jetta, get the book, docfixmyplatebook.com. It's got all these recipes in there. Come here, watch the show on Thursday evenings. You can go to the blackdoctor.org YouTube page and see all of our our previous videos. And so we talk about fats and diets and proteins and all kind of great stuff. Awesome. You kind of put your, yeah, you could just follow that program. Uh, we also have video TV that's on our website and uh, the physician in the kitchen, all of her videos are underneath her own kind of uh, page there on the video TV page. And so you can find all of the videos there. And I promise you, it's like a guide to eating healthy minus my commentary. So, <laughs> when, when you, you know, well, I, I see big money says, Good to see you, good to see you too, Jenna. Thank you. Uh, you're so welcome. We that's what we're here for is to, to empower you by giving you the information to make better decisions for your, your health. And uh, Tina, Sonia, likewise, you're so very welcome. So, until next time, everybody, I am Dr. Monique, the physician in the kitchen. And looking forward to see you. And I'm wishing you good food, good health. Be safe. Wear your sunscreen. Stay hydrated. And enjoy the summer. Absolutely. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.